Hi there! Nice to see you again if you just come over from that Yoko video I uploaded. If not, you're still welcome to join. That mysterious technique that a lot of Japanese is constantly use nowadays and never explain how to do it. At least not in English. If you've always wanted to learn how to apply this technique, look no further. I am here to solve that mystery. I've had a lot of people ask me about this technique, but I didn't really have a chance to use it until now. Hence this video. I've always painted eyes with acrylics. I've never had to try anything else because I didn't need to. Painting eyes requires a lot of practice. It's particularly very difficult for those with shaky hands. I've been lucky enough to not have this issue, but I know a lot of people are not as blessed as me. I've noticed that people who opt for this method are usually the ones with very shaky hands. And they use this as a workaround to that. It's a very simple technique but unfortunately, the things you need are not that easy to come by. This method requires enamel paint, particularly Tamiya paint. And I don't know about you, but over here in the Americas, it is close to impossible to get any type of enamel paint or thinner on this side of the globe. Nobody sells them locally and you actually have to spend a lot of money importing them from international shops. I never used this technique before because I didn't have the means to do it from the paint and not to mention the thinner, which is apparently really extra hard to get. Fortunately for me, I had two followers that were able to go to Japan and I piggybacked on their little trip to have them as my personal little shoppers. So between the two, they acquired all the things I needed and <laughs> shipped them over to me on this side of the globe. So be warned, if you wanna try this, you will probably have a really, really hard time trying to even get what you need. Also, be sure to stay until the end if you want to hear my opinion on this, because I have a lot of things to say about it. For now, let's get into it. To use this technique, you don't need a lot of things, but they're pretty much all really important. First, you need at least one fine and super fine brush to paint. Second, you need to get your hands on some enamel paint and thinner. I've only seen other modelers use this brand. When doing this technique, I wasn't able to find any other info that there was any alternative, so to me, yeah, it is. You will mainly need clear colors. The name of the game for this technique is layering. Clear paint allows you to build up color and blend it as well on top of needing white and other colors that you're going to have to use for that soft look. I also got this mucosal clear color to help with detailing the eyelids and other mucosal areas on her face. And the most important tool you'll need is this Finisher's Master Extra Fine Tip. This is what lets you wipe the paint away by soaking it in enamel thinner. It feels like it's made out of a porous silicone material because it holds liquid in and keeps it moist. To start, your surface needs to be sealed with super high gloss lacquer. Anything else will not let you brush on and wipe away. It needs to be gloss. You can use Mr. Color GX112 or Super Clear Gloss 3. I've seen others use clear orange to quote unquote sketch their eyes first, meaning the general guide to paint over it. Clear orange can be covered easily, but depending on the character, you can use other colors. It's apparently just preference. The idea of this technique is to basically do a rough draft of the eyebrows and eye shape so you can wipe the enamel paint off with a silicone tooltip soaked in enamel to achieve the right shape for everything. Enamel doesn't affect lacquer and vice versa. This means it can be layered over the other and you can wipe it away without wiping the lacquer below. This is a long process. You need a lot of patience for it because you need to go slow. When you're satisfied with the first draft, you need to seal it with a coat of gloss lacquer to save your progress. But once you do, you can't control Z here. So be sure that this is your resolve before you pull the airbrush trigger. You can go back and forth until you're satisfied with this technique as long as you do not seal. 
You need to wait for the gloss to dry and then you can continue with the next layer. It usually takes about two to three minutes to fully dry. When it's ready, you can start to brush on the next layer on. Rinse and repeat for every single layer. So to quickly recap, gloss layer base, enamel paint, seal with another gloss layer, let it dry, continue with the next enamel layer. That's all there is to it. Once I was satisfied with the guides, I then proceeded to use clear yellow as Yoko has yellowish eyes. And life is just a chain of spent a thousand hellos and As I was ready to seal, I waited a few minutes and started the next layer, which was a mix of clear yellow and clear black. I'm basically darkening up the tone as I advance through each new layer. I painted the mouth while I was at it. I used pink and then that mucosal paint very diluted to make it into a wash so that it can seep into tiny crevices inside her mouth. At this point, you can notice how glossy the face is getting. I honestly don't like it because it will take between two to three coats of matte or doll sealer just to kill the shine, but I digress. Every single time you see me add a new tone to the eyes, that was another round of sealing in between, but that's how this works. There was a moment where the paint wasn't fully dry and I could see some of it getting messed up, but I just let it dry a bit more and then continued on. If you need sharper, thin lines, you can always take your fine brush and soak it in a bit of enamel thinner to wipe away the paint and make them. You don't solely have to rely on that tooltip, you can use your brush for it. Adding clear layer by clear layer gives you this manga-like aesthetic that a lot of people look for. Others keep it strictly to make it look exactly like the style of the character. I prefer to have softer eyes on my kits now because it makes them look kinda dreamy and nice, whereas using black to outline irises and lashes make them look too strong and hard. This technique lets you achieve either style. As I was coming close to finishing, I used that mucosal paint over the eyelids and the eye folds. It basically gives this soft, rosy finish as you see in real life. When I was satisfied with everything, I added the catch lights, finished her eyebrows, and added the last layer of gloss coat to seal everything in. And there you have it, the enamel over lacquer eye technique. All right, so you've seen how this works. If it's something you think you can obtain to try this yourself, go for it. I honestly had a really hard time trying to get that mucosal paint. It's not sold anywhere online, and the only reason I have it is because one of my followers was able to, again, be my little personal shopper and went over to Akihabara to one of those shops and actually buy it for me. This technique could be very beginner friendly, had you not have to jump through so many hoops to try and get the things you need. But if you're one of those people that have very shaky hands, you could definitely take advantage of this technique. I learned the hard way over the years to train my hand to not have a shaky pulse. So I really don't have an issue with that. Using this technique didn't change much in my painting process. The only thing that I did notice of a difference was the slightly different result. The things that you can acquire, I've left a link in the description box below. Uh, they are affiliate links, but it will help you kickstart this adventure in the enamel over lacquer eye technique. So while you try to get your hands on the paint, you can start getting this off from the list. Links will be in the description box below. They are affiliate at no cost to you. They just help me in this a uh, little exchange of information that we have here. If you found this guide helpful, please be sure to leave a like in the video and consider subscribing to my channel. I have a lot more information I can share that you can possibly take advantage of right now. You are now free to click away from this video if that's the only thing that you came here for. I am going to go into a little rant for the remainder of this video and I'm not sure if you really want to hear it. Still, thank you so much for coming. And if you stay, uh, welcome, yeah. Welcome to my rant. <laughs> oh, 
sorry. I, I think you're way up there. Uh, come, come on down here. Yeah, down here. Here, there. hi. All right, now that we're real comfy and sitting down, we need to have some real talk here. I've been wanting to get this off my chest for a while, but I've been afraid to actually express it because we all know the internet loves personal opinions. For someone like me that never had the chance to use this technique because of how limited it was to obtain the materials, I've had to endure comments saying, why don't you paint eyes like the Japanese do? I bet you hate change. I think she feels it's beneath her to try something new. I think the way Japanese modelers do it is superior to hers. Mind you, some of these comments were left on my channel in a very respectful manner, but the others were basically part of the conversation in several different message boards that I tend to visit where the topic of garage kid building and my name come up. So that's where I end up reading all these little comments from strangers on the internet. It, it bothered me that people thought that I just didn't want to do it. But it also bothered me that people in this hobby tend to regard Japanese modelers as superior to everybody else. To the point where they put them on a pedestal. I think they worship them a little too much. Or they start to think that if it was not made or if it you or if you didn't follow the Japanese way of doing things that your quality is subpar. It's not the first time I've seen this happen in the community. It happened way back when, when I first started. Uh, but it's happening a lot more often now with how easy it is to find websites where these Japanese modelers post their work and how they do it. So let me tell you this. While this technique is indeed easy and beginner friendly, the fact of the matter is no technique is better than the other one. It falls onto what's easiest for you to try. I've always used acrylics and it obviously provides a different result. It's easy for me, but I know a lot of people don't know how to blend acrylics to create gradients. Also, not everybody has a steady hand. Most of the modelers that you see applying this technique to use it as a cheat code of some sorts. Hear me out. Because most of them that I've seen have very very shaky hands. Again, I've never had that issue. So I see where this is going. Now, should I consider them inferior to me because of that? Of course not. Techniques and methods are invented by people that have a problem and they want to have a workaround to that problem, or in this case, a solution. Then it just happens to catch on. That's what people don't seem to notice when they see everybody starting to invent all these procedures or these processes for garage kit painting and building because most of the times they suck at it and want a solution to their suckiness. You might think that because you see them use color wheels and special phone applications to mix custom colors that they're doing some sort of alchemy, something so complex that it discourages other people to even try it because they're thinking, wow, that's so hard and so complex. I would never be able to pull it off. I mean, if I'm seeing all these Japanese modelers do it, I'm I'm gonna be lost. But it's not that complex. What you also forget is how Japanese society really works. They're always looking for perfection and they will attempt everything and anything to achieve it. Even if it means creating cheat codes for it. I've always believed that you should try something because you personally want to experiment and not because you feel indirect pressure to use something because everybody else is doing it. I had a friend that used to be in a ska band here locally. I was always supporting him in all of his gigs. It was around this time where a Japanese group called Oreska Band was very popular. And I remember, oh, this sounds a lot like my friend's music. I should totally show it to him. I was very excited to share this with my friend. So I came up to him one day and I showed him the music. After about three songs in, he said, I think it, they're really good, but they don't have any soul. I was a little baffled and honestly a little offended that one of my best friends would say such a thing about a band that I really admired and like. So I asked him to elaborate before I kicked his ass. He laughed and he said, Japanese artists are very skilled. They have everything done to methodical perfection. But that's all it is, just method. You can't feel the soul in the music. You can't feel 
the individual playing the music. You just hear the notes coming out of their instruments. I, I honestly didn't get it that much back then, but I totally understand it now. Japanese society fears failure. They do things over and over again until they perfect it. Japanese sushi chefs spending at least a decade practicing making tamagoyaki so that they can start to even do the rolls is example enough. That's the mentality of the Japanese society. And that transfers to everything they do, including garage kid painting. You see all these modelers using exactly the same techniques and methods, and they stick to it without experimenting outside the box. They must stay inside until they perfect that box, which could be never for them. I've noticed that I can't tell figures apart painted from different Japanese modelers. They all look the same. There's nothing that differentiates one from the other. They of course look near perfect and flawless, but that's the thing. Their end goal is to have their figures look as much as a PVC figure without all the imperfections that comes with mass production. But there's no particular style to them there's no soul, which isn't something inherently bad if that's what you're going for. It's gonna be your figure at the end of the day and it's gonna be for you only. But if you're a very creative person and you want to put your own twist in a figure, then don't put yourself in that box. Don't think that because you don't do it like them that your figure or your quality will be less than. It's just going to be different. I've always been able to tell a figure apart from one artist to the next on this side of the globe. They all have very particular styles and very beautiful. They just look very different from the ones that the Japanese modelers paint. I feel this is how it should be because art is a form of personal expression and you should be free to paint your figure the way you'd like and not because you're following someone else because what they do is considered perfection. You can achieve so many amazing results without all the smoke and mirror that these techniques tend to imply to have. Where am I going with all this? I think it's time for people to realize that while yes, Japanese modelers are very skilled at what they do, but that's because their psychology and cultural significance in how and why they work. They also have everything at their fingertips while we're over here having to make do with what we have and what we can get. Don't feel bad because you can't use what they use and you can't paint like they do. And to that matter, don't do that to me either. Don't put me on a pedestal or think that I'm some godly person in this hobby because I'm really not. Have I gained experience and skill over the years? Yes. People tell me very often that I am very talented although I feel otherwise. I feel I still have a lot to improve and a lot to learn. And I feel I yet to deserve being called that and constantly struggling with a really bad case of imposter syndrome that needs to be addressed with my therapist one of these days. But hey, that's just my problem. I'm just here to kick open those doors that gatekeepers like to keep closed. And no, I don't consider any figure painted by a Japanese modeler to be inferior because of what I said of them not having a soul, okay? Don't twist my words. I just pointed out that they're very different from the rest of us. This is a hobby and everybody gets to do it their own way without having to feel less than the other person because you don't march at the beat of the drum of someone else on the other side of the globe. Comment below with an eye emoji to let me know that you actually stayed all the way up until the end. I'm probably gonna ruffle some feathers, but I just wanted to get that off my chest for a very long time now. Until next time, my resin monkeys, don't get your panties in a bunch over what I just said. Okay, bye.